vizuri sana. Asante ni sana. Wenzetu wa kaunti ya Nyeri wa Kenya wenzangu Niruhusu kwanza nisome hii speech kwa lugha ya Kizungu as we say that today we celebrate our right to govern ourselves and that right was not given to us it was a right that we fought for and Nyeri this county of heroes gave us some of the most valiant warriors in that war. Our monumental victory in the War of Liberation from the colonial government was achieved because we had men and women who, on their own volition, sacrificed their lives so that we would be free to govern ourselves. Indeed, on behalf of the people of Kenya, I pay tribute to the heroes from Nyeri County and to every other veteran of the Mau Mau War, and indeed to all other patriots from all corners of this country who fought and shed blood so that we could be free. Our elders won that bitter war because they were united in a common goal to liberate our nation. We have built on their legacy, building a country that has been an island of peace and stability in this region, and indeed in the continent of Africa. I call upon each and every one of us to always be careful and not to allow those who would wish to destroy our peaceful nation. We must, as a people, distinguish between genuine and legitimate desire for change from its exploitation by short-sighted and cynical leaders who would use us for their own selfish ends. A peaceful and prosperous nation needs to be nurtured and protected by a united people. We must learn from our past and shun those who would divide us on ethnic or religious lines. Our forefathers knew that political independence, though necessary, was insufficient to guarantee our prosperity and peace. Equally vital, they knew, was economic independence. We, their sons and daughters, have sought to build the social and economic institutions under which our people will prosper. In the decades since we attained self-rule, there is real progress to show for our efforts. Our welfare and livelihoods have improved sharply since June of 1963. We live almost twice as long, and far more of our children are in school. Far fewer of our mothers die in childbirth, but we have a lot more to do to fulfill the dreams of the independence generation. When I took office four and a half years ago, my task was to sustain and speed up the momentum of our development journey. Mine has been to lay the foundation for a prosperous Kenya, prosperity accessible to each and every Kenyan willing to work. That is why we have improved our roads and built new ones. That is why we have modernized our hospitals by installing modern diagnosis equipment. And that is why we have connected thousands to electricity. And that is why we today have the Madaraka Express which I had the honor of riding into Nairobi yesterday. The Madaraka Express, ladies and gentlemen, is a true living symbol of the journey we are undertaking together. It is the foundation of better incomes 
for our farmers, manufacturers, and other businesses. On address, our dominance as a regional hub, opening up opportunities for new markets for our goods and services, and letting us compete against other ambitious countries for the manufacturing investment that will bring jobs for our sons and daughters. As an alternative to our roads, the Madaraka Express will greatly reduce incidences of disability and death from accidents involving public service vehicles and will move goods quicker across the Eastern African region, cutting delivery times, cutting corruption that has dogged users of roads and transportation for transportation along the Northern Corridor. Our investors will profit from the hotels, lodges, shops, kiosks, and smallholder farmers, schools, and dispensaries targeted at newly migrating workers and settlers. You can now get from Mombasa to Nairobi in four hours, half the time it took as recently as Tuesday. That's the work of an administration that has the courage as well as ambition to cut by half the time taken to achieve an industrialized, job-rich, and secure Kenya. Our expanded and modernized ports and airports will be the logistic centers for the region, and hundreds of thousands of jobs in logistics and service will arise from them and the companies that they serve. For those who live between Nairobi, Nyeri, Nyanyuki, and Isiolo, and those traveling north, our plan is to extend the Thika Highway so that the dual carriage continues all the way to Nyeri, Nyanyuki, <laughs> and ultimately to Isiolo to link up the Northern Corridor with the Lapset Corridor. We will also push for the development of agribusiness and value addition along that transport corridor to transform your hard work into higher incomes and jobs. Taken together, these investments mean that 60 major global corporations, which make Kenya their regional and continental headquarters, will be joined by many more of their counterparts. Young Kenyans will move into the professional ranks, effectively competing with the best from around the world. These initiatives are giving birth to a new Kenya, that Kenya which our founding fathers yearned for, a Kenya in which the basics of a decent life are securely within the reach of our people, a nation whose children will find the jobs and livelihoods their achievements deserve without waiting in line for years or requiring ethnic or family connections. A Kenya whose people won't have to attend weekly harambes or spend family savings to send relatives and friends abroad for modern health services. We will be citizens of a country that can feed itself and the region without regard to weather. And that is why we have worked to escape the persistent problems of rain-fed agriculture. We are developing irrigation schemes that will free us once and for all from the life-threatening risks of climate change and adverse weather. Our continuing vulnerability is felt in every home as drought ravages crops and livestock. The cost of food has risen here in Kenya, and our neighbors are facing full-blown emergencies and are obliged to call for humanitarian intervention. I am well aware the lives and livelihoods of many of our people are threatened by this drought. We have quickly responded 
taking a number of measures, including subsidizing unga until the next harvest season. We have waived import duty on milk and sugar and other foods so that they can remain affordable. We will protect our people, both consumers, but producers as well. My administration, with the support of the World Bank, has put in place livestock insurance, therefore protecting our pastoral communities from losses to drought. And we are taking steps to link livestock farming to markets to make it a more profitable business. We dare not rest content with measures to meet the immediate drought. We had to look at every possible means of raising production of every farmer and herder in Kenya. And that is why we choose, and that is why to choose just a few examples. We have subsidized fertilizer for some. We have waived debts for others. And we approve the recommendations of the Coffee Sector Implementation Committee. I ask the committee to make a plan for the revival of our coffee sector. It was an urgent matter, and we needed to think again about the rules that govern the coffee industry, and we had to think afresh about our production, our marketing, and our value addition. The committee wasted no time, and we quickly agreed a debt waiver for coffee farmers, sacos, and unions amounting to Kenya shillings 478 million and Kenya shillings 1.7 billion on Stabex funds through the Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Consequently, title deeds once held as collateral by the bank have and are being returned to cooperative societies and individual farmers to relieve them of the burden of that debt. Currently, the committee, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries, as well as the Council of Governors, have together earmarked the upgrade, upgrading of the Nairobi Coffee Exchange and the rehabilitation of 500 coffee factories in 31 coffee-growing counties. The state of our nation, fellow Kenyans, is strong. We have transformed our government and our politics to give the greatest voice to the people. Our democracy today is stronger than it has ever been. We have become the biggest economy in our region and one of the largest in Africa. Our people compete with the best in the world in many fields of endeavor, and our country anchors the region's peace and security, and we are a necessary partner in regional and global decision-making. Our achievements have raised our appetite for greater success in the war against poverty, ignorance, and disease, and our desire has been sharpened aiming for the day when every Kenyan has a decent job, a full education, and security for his person and property. Our economy is growing. Services are being delivered to Kenyans better than ever before. But there is still more to do if we are to lift every Kenyan out of poverty and into prosperity. We must find jobs for all our sons and daughters who have met their part of the bargain by diligently going to school. For over 50 years after independence, a majority of us lived in darkness because of lack of planning and the arrogant perception that stima asio ya watu ambao wanaishi kwa nyumba za nyasi. My government understands that every corner of Kenya matters. Every Kenyan deserves basic services. And I am proud today to report that in the last four years, we have added more than two million homes to the electricity grid. 
Our street lights, our streets have been made safer by the street lighting program and traders, including here in Nyeri Town, now sell their wares far into the night without fear, benefiting from extended business hours. Connection by connection, we are slowly developing our economy into a 24-hour economy. Yes, we have worked to connect every home to electricity so that our children learn better and more equally, no matter what part of the country they come from. It is a matter of basic fairness and equity. Our efforts have ensured that 23,000 primary schools across the country have been electrified over the last four years. We did it because we strongly believe that our education system should not leave some of our children behind based on incomes of their parents or their being born in distant rural areas as opposed to large cities. And that is why we are also fully committed to free secondary education and a full transition of all our children from primary to secondary school as of January 2018. And that is why we, has also, we have also scrapped exam fees. And as I said, with the scrapping of exam fees, we will ensure that secondary school is free from January 2018, and future generations will get the education they need to continue transforming our great nation. We want every part of Kenya and every Kenyan to be fairly included in development. That's why we have ensured that 60,000 public facilities, just under 70% of the total, and most in rural areas, are connected to electricity. My promise to you is that every remaining area will be connected in the next three years. In the off-grid counties of Wajia, Trukana, Garissa, Mandera, and Masabit, we are installing 25 solar hybrid stations. And once complete, these stations will open up opportunities in these regions while improving security and protecting the environment. Indeed, in the last four years, my administration has raised the ratio of our people with access to clean water to 60%. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that 5.7 million Kenyans who did not have clean water in 2013 have it today. Notable progress has been made in providing clean water. New water schemes have been constructed in Nairobi, Kisumu, Mombasa, and Nakuru. In addition, medium-sized water supplies have been developed in Narok, Maua, Homa Bay, Kitui, Lamu, and Nyahururu. We have also increased access to sanitation and an additional 1.75 million Kenyans are now covered. Better sanitation and clean water prevents diseases, raises our productivity, and more importantly, they mean dignified lives for our people. To improve access to clean water, my government has laid plans for the construction of the Northern Collector Tunnel which will supply water to Nairobi and its metropolitan area, the Mzima II pipeline for additional water to Mombasa and Taita Taveta, the Siaya Bondo Water Project, and the Thwake Dam, Chemsusu, all of which I'm glad to say are on course. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya will soon become an oil exporting country. And even before a single barrel has been sold, 
the spending by investors is transforming Trukana and neighboring country, counties. We will see oil pipelines, new roads, and new railways that will crisscross our country, carrying the products that will raise the incomes of every Kenyan. Oil revenues will be joined by earnings from the rising number of manufacturers taking advantage of our new and improved infrastructure. Already car manufacturers, VW and Peugeot, are already showing and have started manufacturing here in Kenya. Car manufacturing is the iconic emblem of an industrializing economy. Diverse manufacturing investors are all excited to play a part in a vibrant and develop, developing country. And as we grow the industries of the future, we have not forgotten the old ones. We are reviving sectors that have suffered from neglect. Our measures, for example, have saved jobs in companies like Pan Paper and are creating others as businesses establish themselves in regions that once felt left out of development. We will need healthy workers and families to ensure that these investments find a productive workforce. For years, Kenyans had only three referral hospitals, all built in colonial times. Now, after the efforts of the past four years, we have 92 referral hospitals across the country. The welfare of the people should be the first priority of every president. And I am proud that under my administration, my government has unveiled programs such as Linda Mama, saving thousands of young lives every year and protecting women in childbirth. Just as we have brought modern medical equipment to hospitals nationwide, we have also expanded NHIF to cover catastrophic illnesses so that those already facing tough personal battles can focus on recovery free from financial fear. We have expanded access to hundreds of thousands of vulnerable Kenyans, the orphaned, the elderly, the disabled, so that we can lighten burdens none of us would ever wish upon another. If a grandmother in Busia lacks care in her final years, the nation has abandoned its parents. I say that we will not abandon our parents. We will honor our mothers and fathers by making sure that they live in dignity in their old age. And that is why from January of 2018, my administration will expand the monthly stipend program to cover all mothers and fathers of Kenya of 70 years and above. At this point, I would like to express my personal gratitude and that of the Kenyan people to the government of Hungary, where Ambassador Mina was a few days ago, for providing us funds to construct a cancer hospital in Nyeri. This hospital, this hospital will serve the people of Nyeri, Kirinyaga, Muranga, Meru, Laikipia, Isiolo, and other parts of our country. Alongside this, we will expand and upgrade the Nyeri Provincial General Hospital as well as the Odaya District Hospital. <laughs> Fellow Kenyans, our nation still remains at risk. Our people must be secured against the threats from terrorists and politicians seeking to spark confrontation, as well as criminals. We have made far-reaching investment in our security system, 
increasing the number of personnel, adding sophisticated technology, and stepping up our training and coordination. And we are also working to ensure that citizen engagement and in, in innovative tools to disengage, rehabilitate, reintegrate criminals and extremists will complement our security system. <coughs> the world has learned from the catastrophes in the Middle East and other parts of Northern Africa that the terrorists who seek the destruction of democracies like Kenya can quickly exploit vacuums in governance and government. And that is why we will continue with our stabilization mission in Somalia, keeping to the commitments we have made alongside our neighbors and the international community to support Somalia for the sake of its security as well as ours. Fellow Kenyans, the most vital element in all our efforts to transform our country is to ensure that we are governed well. Here, too, there are successes to mention. In establishing devolution, we embrace the most effective way of managing our diversity and holding our leaders to account. Devolution and the democracy on which it rests have freed our people's energies and enabled robust citizen participation in decision-making. Since you entrusted my government with the responsibility of forging our new constitutional order, we have continuously ensured the effective implementation of devolution. We have kept to the timelines agreed, providing the needed administrative support, and going far beyond the constitutional threshold in financing counties. <coughs> this is a historic achievement that all Kenyans should be very proud of. My brothers and sisters, a new Kenya is here. We must continue to dream big and boldly implement our vision so that every Kenyan can share in this country's bounty. The work my administration has taken is a foundation for that transformative change, which will benefit Kenyans for generations to come. A transformed Kenya calls for new politics. We need politics that look forward, not back. We need to leave behind leaders obsessed with using the conflicts of the past to divide us, rather than leading us forward in unity. Let every Kenyan remember the history, let every Kenyan remember the history of our country and what it has taught us of the dangers of, divided, of a divided society, of breaking people apart, all for the gain of a few. We should commit to redouble our efforts to instill in our youth a deep sense of patriotism and an appreciation of the gift to be a Kenyan. We must use every tool at our disposal to banish ethnicity and discrimination in any form. I know that there is still far more to be done, but I have immense faith in the greatness of our people. After all, we have already overcome challenges far greater than any that lie before us. I am proud to be a Kenyan in 2017, and how privileged I feel to be your president in this period of promise, and how blessed to be a Kenyan as our nation rises to the heights our forefathers foretold. Remember <coughs> that Kenya is still a young nation, a nation with great potential and opportunity for all of us. This is a moment for boldness, and henceforth, our politics must be shaped by the desire to take Kenya forward to prosperity for all. As a government, we will protect your rights to exercise 
the choice that you shall make in August 8th. I will assure all Kenyans that our security apparatus will remain vigilant and ready to deal with acts of lawlessness and disorder. All I ask of you as Kenyans is to reject the politics of division and conflict, that you vote in peace. That way, no matter the outcome, we will all win. We are 45 million strong, united as one Kenyan family. Elections will come and go, but Kenya shall remain, and we must remain as one. We all have a duty and obligation to protect the house that we have built and are still building. Keep faith always that we will renew this nation, for we are a people of faith, and we believe that justice will prevail, that peace will prevail, and that the people of Kenya will prevail. Kwa hayo machache na mengi, mimi nataka kushukuru sana wananchi wa county hii ya Nyeri ambao wametuandalia sherehe za madaraka za mwaka huu niseme asante kwa wote ambao wamehusika kwa mipango niseme asante kwa wananchi wa Nyeri kwa vile mmetukaribisha hapa kwenu kulingana na vile tuliamua mwaka uliopita ya kwamba ndio tuweze kuunganisha wa Kenya sherehe za kitaifa tutakuwa tunazizungusha county kwa county na ndio tuweze kuleta wa Kenya wetu pamoja na isiwe ya kwamba sherehe zitakuwa pekee Nairobi Nyeri county ni muhimu kwa Kenya na lazima tuwe hapa na wa Kenya wengine kutoka sehemu zingine waweze kuja nyeri na waone wenzao wa hapa nyeri sherehe ingine tutaipeleka pahali pengine mimi nataka niseme ya kwamba hapa nyeri najua bado kuna shida na hii ni kitu ambaye nimeongea sana na sitaki niongee tena hii issue ya colonial villages karibu 150 Najua kazi imeendelea lakini haijakwisha lakini mimi nataka na nimeamurisha waziri wa ardhi mimi nimekupatia wiki tatu umalize kazi hiyo na uhakikishe ya kwamba hizo titles wananchi wamepewa na mimi nitakuwa hapa after those three weeks waniambie kama wamepata titles zao au hawajapata tuwezi kila saa kuwa tunaahidi kitu alafu hatutimizi tunataka tutimize haya vile nimesema pia na shukuru serikali ya serikali ya hungry kwa sababu juzi tuliweka mkataba pamoja na hawa na wamekubali kutusaidia kujenga hospitali ya kansa katika county hii ya Nyeri na mimi najua ya kwamba hiyo hospitali itasaidia sana wananchi wa county hii na pia county ambazo ziko karibu na nyinyi kwa sababu lazima tutie mkazo kusaidia wananchi ambao wanatumia pesa nyingi sana kutibu watu ambao wako na huo ugonjwa wa kansa na mimi najua ya kwamba hiyo hospitali ikiisha itasaidia sana kupunguza gharama na kusaidia pia kukinga huo ugonjwa wa kansa katika sehemu hii vile nimesema pia kutoka mwaka ujao Januari tuataka watoto wetu wote wasome Rais Kibaki alituanzishia mfumo wa elimu ya bure katika shule zetu za primary kitu ambacho kimesaidia wananchi kwa jamhuri hii yetu sana na kupunguza 
gharama ambayo wazazi walikuwa wanalipa ndio waweze kusomesha watoto wao tumesema na sisi pia kutoka mwaka ujao watoto wote ambao wataingia shule za upili kutoka form 1 mpaka form 4 mzazi hataitishwa pesa itakuwa vile tu kama ya free primary na ndio tuhakikishe ya kwamba watoto wetu wameweza kusoma kutoka darasa la kwanza mpaka form 4 na huo mzigo uwe ni mzigo wa serikali na pia wakimaliza form 4 tuwe tumemaliza zile technical training schools ambazo tunajenga katika kila constituency ndio wengine wataenda technical training na wengine waingie vyo vyetu vikuu kama kimavi hapa na tuhakikishe ya kwamba hatuna watoto wadogo ambao wanaranda randa kwa sababu mzazi amekosa karo ya kupeleka mtoto shule hiyo ndiyo njia ya kuhakikisha tumesawazisha wananchi na hakuna mtu ambaye amewachwa nyuma kwa sababu ya shida hii au nyingine tumesema pia ya kwamba wazee wetu tuataka kuhakikisha ya kwamba wazee wetu wote ambao wamezidi wako miaka sabini au kwenda juu wote kutoka mwaka ujao watakuwa wanachukua ile pesa ya cash transfer na ndio tuhakikisha ya kwamba hata wazee wetu wanaishi maisha ya dignity hata na uzee wao wakijua ya kwamba kila mwezi wako na pesa watakuwa wanapokea kutoka serikali yao na ndio waweze kuendelea na maisha yao hiyo ni kitu ambacho tutaanzisha la mwisho na la muhimu hata nikiwaomba kura wenzangu wa Kenya la muhimu sana siku ya leo ikiwa ni sherehe ya kitaifa ya mwisho mbele ya uchaguzi mkuu ni kuwaomba wa Kenya pahali popote mulipo jameni tumekuwa na uchaguzi kila mwaka kutoka wakati tulipata uhuru na waomba kwa heshima kuu usikubali kama wa Kenya kugawanywa kwa misingi ya kikabila ya kidini kila mkenya ako na haki ya kupiga kura sisi tutahakikisha ya kwamba tumetoa ulinzi wa kutosha yangu ni kuwauliza tupige hiyo kura kwa amani tupige hiyo kura kwa heshima tukijua ya kwamba taifa la Kenya litakuweko baada ya uchaguzi wa mwezi wa Augusti Kenya will still be here and the Kenyan people will still be here long after the elections elections can no longer be about individuals they must be about the people they must be about agendas they must be about transformation not dividing our people not shedding blood we did not fight for our independence in order to shed our own blood umwagikaji wa damu hatutaki kuona tena ati kwa sababu ya uchaguzi tuwe watu ambao wataheshimiana na watakubali waamuzi wa wananchi ambao ndio wengi kwa sababu serikali yoyote ambayo itaingia hata kama na mimi narudia sana serikali ya Kenya ni serikali ya wale walikupigia kura na hata wale ambao hawakukupigia kura so mtu asiwezi kuona ya kwamba kwa sababu yule ambaye nilitaka hakuchaguliwa nilete vita la ukishindwa gojea nafasi nyingine hao ni namna gani wenzangu na mimi nikimalizia lazima nichukue nafasi hii kuwauliza wa Kenya miaka hiyo chache ni ine tumefanya yale ambaye tumeweza tumeweka msingi ambao tuataka sasa kujenga juu yake tuhakikishe 
ya kwamba tumeweza kupanua sasa uchumi wetu vijana wetu wapate kazi na nchi yetu ipate utajiri na tupigane na umaskini ugonjwa katika taifa letu langu ni kuwaomba mtupe nafasi tuweze tumalize ile kazi ambaye tumeanza kwa hayo machache na mengi mimi nasema Mungu awabariki nyote Mungu alinde taifa letu la Kenya Mungu alinde wananchi wetu na tuendelee kuzingatia amani na umoja asanteni sana thank you very much Naomba tusimame sote tafadhali mahali tulipo kwa wimbo wa taifa